Let's talk about your your favorite project A that you mentioned where you're like, we're doing everything across the spectrum of supply, demand, everything. Maybe just centering it on each piece of that so we all can kind of like learn with you on what are you seeing? Maybe first from like the inventory and supply piece, like what are some nuggets that you're learning that you would pass on to another large organization thinking about doing a transformation like this? In that particular space, it's probably the most challenging time in the industry ever, right? So if you didn't have good forecasting systems, even if you had the best forecasting systems, by the way, you could never have predicted what was going to happen. You couldn't predict COVID. You couldn't predict the backup in the ports in China. You couldn't predict now with the, the war in Ukraine and the disruption in, in a lot of the grains and you know other things that they were exporting. You couldn't predict it, but with better predictive analytics, you sure as heck would be in better space than you are today. Luckily, this company had already embarked on that pre-COVID, had the Blue Yonder system up and running. And so when things exploded and blew out everyone's demand signals, at least we were able to scrub that and go back and see what the new steady state, state should look like. So in the whole world of planning and demand planning and supply planning, for me, the most interesting thing is that the customer is continuing to evolve. And so having a system that is enabled with using predictive analytics to really be able to be in front of that customer change rather than just looking at the historicals of what's happened in the past, what happened a year ago, what happened a year ago isn't going to happen in the next month. So being much more recent and really understanding what happened last week and the week before and the week before to say, okay, this is what's going to happen in the next few weeks, that part of that project or any project that I'm working on in that space, to me, I would recommend to any retailer, whether it's e-com or it's brick and mortar, that's a place I think people should be investing in and really understanding because they need to be taking a consumer centric approach now rather than the old approach of, you know, it was a CPG company shipping to the retail company and, you know, it would be in our store and our customer would come in. The customer is at the center of that now and making the decisions every day about where they're going to go. The marketplace is open. They can go just about anywhere to get what they want. And brick and mortar is one, still one important piece of it, but it's even the CPG companies are now not just selling a brick and mortar, but they're selling everywhere. They're doing their own direct to consumer. So you have to be able to be ahead of it from a planning perspective. So the planning space is one that and I think is probably the most important right now, regardless of what, you know, format you're delivering your product or brand to the market. Yeah. Are there any unique, maybe variables, data points that you see these companies leveraging to be able to give them a better forecast? Whenever I've seen people building out models, it's so easy to let the past influence the future. And that's how you're even building out your models half the time is like letting history just kind of like project it into the future. What are you looking at? Yeah, the today? models need to be tighter in and more recent, right? I mean, the old models used to go back six months, they'd go back 12 months, they'd look at those trends and the trends are changing so significantly. A lot of the online retailers are just looking at people's search history, right? How many times have they looked at a product? What's their propensity if they buy this project to buy another product? So building those type of algorithms to start to predict and demand, it's very difficult in this particular moment because there'll be another surge of COVID and then things will change again. And the biggest thing for us right now is getting that the more recent recent data and then being able to take that and say, okay, these units were doing X amount and what we're seeing this, we're seeing this. And now we've seen a dramatic change in consumer behavior in the last six weeks. And that's due to something. They're responding to something. They're responding to something in the marketplace that is driving people to certain skincare brands or something that's happening, you know, in, in the whole healthcare space, whatever it is, whatever the news is with the Every single day you turn on and you hear about inflation, 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 right? Well, consumers respond to that and their behavior changes in discretionary items. So you have to say, okay, here are my product attributes. Are these discretionary or are they not discretionary? If they're discretionary and I'm starting to very quickly see a drop, I've got to predict that and stop building my inventory on those items because I'm going to end up like a lot of the fashion retailers did with a bunch of product that they didn't sell. I'm sure you're able to tap into some of your psychology, you know, mindset to be able to be like, here's what I think is happening here. I mean, do you find yourself kind of going back? Yeah, to well, I just, from I remember years ago before we even 
people were even really talking about it, but it was okay. So it's like the ball of shampoo or the toothpaste. People would stockpile those or you throw out the toothpaste when it's like halfway done because I just want a new fresh one and I want somebody to the mess. People stop doing that. And that, that psychology of the shopper is that I need to stretch every dime because I'm spending over $5 a gallon for fuel to just get to my job. So I want to be able to have some money in my bank at the end of the day. People are getting more and more concerned about the recession. So certain discretionary items like that or personal care items that they can use the last drop of shampoo rather than buy it when it's half full. All of that behavior changes and you can go back in history and see certain categories that are get during inflationary times and during recession get hit very hard where other ones survive because you need milk, you need eggs. When you're seeing this behavior shifting in real time, how much of it is the client just adjusting their inventory and forecasts and changing that? Or how much are they maybe adjusting their language around the product to make it seem like this is something that you need even in hard times? Like, Yeah, so I yeah. do think that brands need to be very cognizant of that when they're thinking about their brand and how it's going to survive in the next six months, 12 months, 18 months. They should be thinking about their brand positioning and how does that brand position well in an inflationary possible recession, right? And is it going to survive or is the message need to be somewhat different to make the consumer feel like they really do need that product? Hopefully all the smart marketing people are sitting in their rooms thinking about what's next for my particular brand or how can I take that brand message and tie it into or the things that are, that are so important, the social consciousness, the sustainability messages, and kind of reposition some brands in the marketplace that, in order to save them if they can be saved at this point. It's a mission critical at this point because there are way too many choices. The brand proliferation has, it, it's almost hard sometimes to say, oh, I want to try something new. I want to try a new facial wash or a hand So Where do I start these days? Because unless I have a very serious set of criteria, it's hard to even figure out what's the, the big point of differentiation. Hey, thanks for watching. This segment was made possible by our friends at Salesforce Commerce Cloud. If you're looking for the number one platform for all your commerce needs, go check out salesforce.com slash commerce. And don't forget to subscribe below and tap that little bell icon so you can stay on top of all the amazing new segments and full episodes that we'll be putting out over the coming year with some of the best and most influential commerce leaders out there.